Greetings, everybody. Today I will be going over if statements and other conditional statements. Um, it's pretty simple, but very integral in, in programming. So let's get started. Um, basically, it's just if. And you have some condition, and then you have, and then, and you have code that you run, if that's true. And then you have, uh, if that's not true, you could have else. Some code to run if it is not true. And then when you're all done, you say end if. So, let's write a real one here. If mm, let's ask the user what x is. So then we say if x equals one, then print x is 1 else print x is not 1 and if so here if we say 2 x is not 1 but if we say x is 1 x is 1. So it's really quite simple. Um, and really useful. I mean, this really uh, does not do the if statement justice here, but um, I'll be writing a... we'll be writing a program later on. Our very first functional program um, later in this video. So let's get started on that. But before we get to that, there's one other thing I need to show you um, to write this program we'll be needing to learn how to do branch labels now a lot of programmers will tell you that branch labels and go to statements they're kind of a nuisance for beginning programmers but I really don't see why that is true um, I think it's called sp spaghetti programming where you'll loop all over the place and wrap your mind in knots and gets confusing but as long as you know what you're doing I don't see a problem with them so um, basically how how a branch label works is you put them in these square brackets here and then you give it a name label and then somewhere later on you can say go to that label or maybe somewhere else in some other label and then it'll run that code so in that way you kind of get a loop there also in earlier versions of basic each line would have a number so like m maybe this would be 10 and this would be 20 you know etc but that's even worse than with the branch labels because then you really can <laughs> can uh, get pure spaghetti programming there and that is something to be avoided now I think we have pretty much everything we need to get started on this game um, let's have it be where the computer picks a number from 1 to 100 and then you have seven guesses to guess the number and uh, it'll tell you higher or lower so you can kind of home in on it so this will be a culmination of everything we've learned so far um, you know variables and um, overwrite statements and function I don't know if I taught you functions but anyway go to statements and conditional statements so first better print to the screen what it's all about so the user knows what's going on guess a number 
that I am thinking of from 1 to 100. And then here's how you can get the computer to pick a random number. You use a function called RND, it stands for random. But we want it to be an integer, so we use the integer function as well. But the random number generates a decimal between 0 and 1. So we're going to want to multiply that by 100. Um, yeah, you don't have to memorize these functions. There's a whole list of them uh, in somewhere in these help files. So I, I've only probably got like 3% of them memorized. So yeah, there's quite a bit of them. And they're pretty useful too. Actually, this is going to generate an, uh, an integer from 0 to 99 because it rounds down. So let's add, let's add 1 to it. All right. So they have seven guesses. So let's tell them that you have seven guesses. And then let's put that in variable form. Number of guesses equals seven. All right, so now we're going to get started on our loop here. Um, it'll loop like seven times. There's another way to do this using for or while loops, but that's going to be a later tutorial. For now, we're going to just use the go to method. Oh, by the way, let's put a branch label here. Start. That's the beginning. All right. And then I'll just call this one loop. Um, so this would be guess number, actually let's just input the guess and then we compare it to the value of x and see if it's higher, lower, or equal to. So if guess equals x then, and um, something about if statements, if it's just y, one, if it's just one line, you can have it right after the word then. You don't need um, to have the second line and then the end if, because that's more lines that you need. But if you're going to have multiple lines of code for that condition, then you're going to need to go on to the next line, but we don't need that. Also, you don't need the go-to statement if in this case either. So in this case, uh, if guess equals x, then they win. So let's have a branch label called you win later on. Um, so if guess is less than x, then print too low. If guess is higher than x, then print too high. Um, now, we're going to have to do an overwrite statement to make the value of guesses now 6, because they already had one guess. So, <clears throat> say guesses equals guesses minus 1. And remember how this is not an equation. It takes the old value of x, subtracts 1, and makes that the new value of guesses. All right. Now, if we're all out of guesses, they lose. And if they haven't got it, then at this point we'll know. So we'll say, if guesses equals zero, then go to you lose. And then we'll have to go back to the loop, or it'll just move on to the next part of the code. So, go to loop. Now at this point we can have, actually, I forgot a line here. We want to tell them which guess number it is so they know how how much how many guesses they have left. This is guess number, and then put the semicolon in a variable. No guesses. We don't want to tell them what number it is. Wait, something wrong with my logic there. 
that's going to tell them 7 at first. So we want to, the first guess is number 1. So 8 minus 7 is 1. Yeah, a lot of programming is just kind of thinking, if you know what I mean. Just kind of using your brain, which I kind of like. Alrighty. Um, Alright, so let's make this the branch label it goes to when you win. Let's tell them that they won. And then ask them if they want to play again. So they don't have to close and open the program again. And let's have them input like a character <clears throat> Single characters make it easy. And let's call that answer. And remember, a string variable has the dollar sign at the end. And here we'll have um, another if statement. If the answer is yes, then go to the beginning. Else, um, then we're done. So let's just say stop. That that command stops a program completely. I had told you it's end, but I don't think it's end. It's stop. Um, and then you do end if, and that's what happens if you win. Similar similarly, we have one for you lose. play again and let's just copy and paste because this is all the same ta-da all right what am I forgetting um looks like this is everything um, Let's try it. Ready? Here's the moment of truth. Guess a number that I'm thinking of from 1 to 100. You have seven guesses. Guess number one. Let's pick a number right in the middle. Alrighty. Let's try 25. No, too low. 75. Still too low. Ah! Wow, that was lucky. <laughs> wow. I won on the third guess. Play again? Nah, we get the picture. So, that is basically our first program. Really thrilling, isn't it? And if you keep watching these tutorials, we'll be doing some stuff even more advanced than this. So, stay tuned. And so long.